Happy New Year's everyone, this is Brian. Uh, this video is a little bit premature. Usually I do the New Year's or end of year wrap up on New Year's Eve, but I'm gonna have the grandkids this year, so I just simply won't have time because I'm gonna have them for several days and the likelihood of me being able to sit down and record anything longer than 30 seconds is just slim to none. If you have kids or grandkids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this video, if you've never watched one of my end of year reviews, is pretty much like a video diary of what have I done and what am I going to be doing with a little bit of technical information sprinkled in between personal information. So if you're here for tutorials, this is not the video for you. This is more for me to sit back and reflect on what I've done and where I'm going. So 2020, well actually 2019, I was married and uh, it was late 2019 and we went immediately from that into COVID-19. So it's kind of interesting how I got married and then immediately went into lockdown. Um, everybody knows COVID-19 is, regardless of where you stand on the whole stance of whether it's dangerous or a hoax or whatever, it, you know it's had a major impact on the globe and pretty much most of the globe's in lockdown of some kind. Um, I'm in a rural part of Michigan. I'm actually in a little city called Battle Creek, which is you look at your right hand and represent that as the map of Michigan. It's halfway between Detroit and Chicago. So there's absolutely nothing here, like nothing. And now you tell us that we're all locked in our homes for a year. Everybody's just bored to tears. I think everybody's got their money's worth out of Netflix this year. Um, COVID-19 has pretty much shaped our world and probably a few years to come, It would be my guess. It's pretty, pretty ugly right now. But it's given us time to focus on what's important. Um, this has impacted a lot of people's mental health. And my wife and I, fortunately, are doing very good. She is a therapist, and she's branched off into her own private practice, which is PowerfulTherapy.net. And she is now you know, helping people get through these dark times. Um, this is fairly new. So as a startup, they always say that startups struggle. But she's just hit the ground running, and I'm really proud of her. So... Um, Pretty interesting how that's played out. She's just got a flood of people and uh, she's always busy. And I th think a lot of it is in part because she's a kick ass therapist. And COVID 19 has a lot of people really going through some, tr some trying times and some toughness. All right. On top of that, you know, if that wasn't bad enough, now we've got, you know, social unrest. And again, no matter where you stand on this issue, regardless of who you are or where you are, it has impacted you in some manner. Um, even in my small little town of Battle Creek, Michigan, we've had riots and protests and parts of the city shut down. And, you know, the major cities around us have gone into total, almost militant lockdown to the point where they said, we will arrest you if you go into these areas and protest. Um, my, my personal thoughts, both sides of the debate could have handled it a little better. Um, on one hand, police brutality needs to end. But on the other hand, the police presence is there for a reason without the police presence it's just pure anarchy and chaos so defunding the police probably is not the answer i think probably education on both sides of the fence is really well needed but that's all i'm going to say about that um but there's some good news there was a wedding this is my stepdaughter Brittany, and my new son-in-law howard and the grandkids that will be here over the holidays this little guy cracks me up um but just kind of going back to these issues it's really hard to explain this to these kids you know why do you have to wear this mask and it's just really hard on children altogether so very proud of these two for tying the knot happy couple and my other stepdaughter she got married to Kay and jj got married and i actually performed that wedding i actually went out and got ordained it's not as fancy as it sounds but i actually performed the wedding it's the first one i ever did so i was i put a lot of effort in there i'm very happy for those two um and UFOs. That's right, UFOs. If 2020 wasn't weird enough, the Pentagon actually released out on CNN and pretty much every major news outlet that yes, UFOs exist and we have no idea what they are. This is just the footage. Draw your own conclusion. Um, if you're really interested in this topic, then go out to YouTube and look up the Joe Rogan show. And he's got Commander Fravor on there and they talk about how they had the military aircraft with all of the uh, guidance systems locked onto this thing and they still couldn't figure out what it was or what it was doing and they could barely keep up with it so and it turns out that they've known about these things for a while so are they ufos are they some weird new amazon drone delivering packages out in the middle of the ocean who knows um, again draw your own conclusion on what these things are and of course yes of course 
these two, again, regardless of where you stand on this issue, I think both of them could have handled it better. Um, it appears that Mr. Biden has won. And I say appears because he's not been inaugurated yet at this point, even though he's won the popular vote and the electoral vote. But current president of the United States, Donald Trump, is filing a lot of lawsuits. So it's just insane. This year has been completely crazy, but the vast majority of the time has been spent in marital bliss and COVID-19 lockdown, which sucks. I hate being locked down because I really enjoy going out, you know, hiking and shooting and things like that. I did actually a fair amount of fishing this summer. So what have I been working on all year? Well, that's a good question. I've really been pumping up the Void Realms Facebook group, and I actually cannot take credit for this. It's actually the admins, um, Drew Hookway especially. He's really been a kick-ass admin. Um, I almost feel like I should just transfer ownership of the group to him because he makes a lot of those decisions that I just can't figure out. I'm actually not very Facebook smart. Um, really been working on Udemy. Um, Total Students has just shot through the roof. I'm just really surprised that it was... I'm actually at a loss for words. I'm really stumbling just trying to put words together and how blown away I was by this. Um, but I published a lot of courses just this year alone. Um, and you notice how they're Q5. So we're going to talk about Q6 here in a minute. So if you're excited for Q6, get, get really excited. But, you know, uh, Q5 was kind of my main focus. I did do Dart and Flutter, and I'm going to live with you. I love the technology, but I hate dealing with it. I hate dealing with it because it evolves so fast. By the time I do a video for Dart or Flutter, the technology's changed and somebody's screaming, it doesn't work. And it's just a real pain. So I've also made this little video out here, or actually not a video, a course called How to Get a Job in IT. And I am a hiring manager. So I've actually hired and interviewed literally hundreds of people across dozens of organizations. Um, so this is just really, you know, how you should conduct yourself in a job interview. And it really looks at it from both sides of the table, whether you are interviewing or you're interviewing someone and just, you know, the mentality of a hiring manager and some situations that I faced in my own personal life. Um, I'm actually really blown away by the reviews on this thing because it was just really me sitting there talking about things. So going back here, let's rewind because I suspect the vast majority of you watch these cute videos that I make. I've really been deep diving into Qt5. I did a core for beginners, core intermediate, core advanced, and then I did QML beginners and widgets beginners. Yes, I'm going to do an intermediate advanced for each one of these, but I haven't gotten there yet. And I did this Qt5 design patterns, which is kind of like if you know all this other stuff, this is really just kind of glue it all together. Um, really surprised about all this, but I've been watching the feedback like a hawk. I really do try to interact with students through these things because if they're paying harder money, I really have to be present for it. Um, unfortunately, Qt6 was released. Now I say unfortunately, it's actually really great news, but unfortunately they did redesign a good bit of Qt Core and they are making a lot of changes under the hood. Like they're switching to CMake as the build system. Don't worry. QMake is not going away. I actually still use QMake, but they're switching to CMake as the primary build system. They're going to stop development on QMake and some other things like they're moving up to C17 and a whole lot of changes and tweaks under the hood. But the core libraries, I almost feel like, I really do feel like this was just a complete rewrite of the core libraries. So much has changed. And it's because of that. I'm pretty much going to re-record all of these with Qt6. Um, I almost have to because the codes change, the technology's changed. It doesn't make sense to say, if you're in five, do this. If you're in six, do that, and then let the user figure it out. So I've done code freezes on all the Qt5 courses, and I will not make updates to those anymore. And I'm going to re-record all of them in Qt6, more after I get through the rest of these slides. Um, and not even last but least here, um, Qt 2020 champions. I was really humbled that I was actually named as one of the 2020 champions. And I've worked with Qt on a few different projects. I've actually gone out and I've built uh, videos for them on their YouTube channel. And there's been a lot of collaboration back and forth, but my schedule is just so, so overwhelming. Sometimes I just don't have the time to dedicate to it. 
I often find myself recording videos really late at night on like a weekend or something. And um, I almost feel bad that I can't give cute the full attention I think they deserve. But I was really humbled that I got nominated and actually won as a uh, content creator for the cute champions of 2020. Oh, I'll be getting a t-shirt. You'll probably see a picture of me that sometime soon. And I don't know if you've noticed, but my voice sounds a little bit better. It's because I have purchased a Yeti microphone. It's a little pricey as far as microphones. I'm used to recording on literally a $10 microphone. But uh, going back to all the other things, yes, I do listen to feedback and everybody's screaming, get a better microphone. So that's what I've done. And on top of that, I've been really learning OBS Studio, which is what I'm recording this on right now, and shortcut video editing. Um, if you want examples of all that, you can go out to my YouTube channel and my subscriber base has actually grown quite a bit. I was surprised, but I've been just kind of playing around with video editing and this microphone and trying to be a little bit more professional, even in my YouTube videos, just trying to really get good at this stuff because traditionally I've just recorded a video and thrown it right up. No editing, no nothing. So, and yes, you notice there is a lot of Python videos out on my YouTube channel now. Um, I do eventually want to do a full Python course, but really I'm looking at doing Qt and Python together, doing an integrated course between the two that really merges the two technologies. Whew. All right. So that was a lot to cover. Um, the big takeaway here is 2021 is pretty much going to be the year of Qt for me, where I'm going to re-record all of these. So what I've really been working on are these three scripts. These are in Python. The first one will go out and delete the .user files from the project folders. The second one goes out and looks for Qt 5 projects and converts them to Qt 6. So it will generate a cmakelist.txt out of your project files, and it will take your existing project file and upgrade it to C++ 17. This thing is going to save me a ton of work. And then I literally just today developed this guy right here, which will go out and take all of those projects and run them through a test and it just compiles them and tells me which ones passed and which ones failed and i'm just kind of whipping through here here so like you can test cmake you can test qmake or you can run your own test so let's just test cmake here kind of in real time i hope this thing doesn't blow up so i just have 10 test projects out there and it'll go through and it'll build and compile each one and it gets the exit code out of the compilation process. And at the very end of all of this, it's going to kick out a pass fail for each one. And that gives me a good idea of all of the code that I've written, not just for YouTube, but Udemy and some private stuff that I've written for myself and small businesses, what's working and what's not working in Q6. Because let's face it, Q6 has a lot of changes in here. So yeah, right here. You can see these guys all passed, these two failed, so I'll have to go out and see what's going on with these two projects right here and why they failed. So, wow, that is a lot of information to cover. So, in a nutshell, happy 2020. I hope to see you all in 2021, and I hope you all have a happy new year.